Gail Rosen. I own Andamento Studio and Gallery. I sell mosaics and jewelry and lots and lots of minerals and crystals. And there's a lot of flash and dazzle here. We've got labradorite and quartz and vanadinite and all kinds of really pretty things. But my favorite stones in the store are actually these. These are called goddess stones. At least that's what I call them. In Quebec, where they're found, the Algonquin natives had a word for them that somebody translated as fairy. So they call them fairy stones there. But I was promoting them as fairy stones, and my kid wrote me an email and said, Mom, if these indeed are fairy stones, I would leave them where you found them, because the fairy folk do not take kindly to their possessions being disturbed. And I laughed and emailed back, you have a point, but I don't think these have anything to do with the fairy folk or the Duatha Dadana or any of their cultural or folkloric ilk. And if I had to call them something, I would call them goddess stones because they remind me of like the Venus of Willendorf, all that luscious feminine roundness. And I would like to think that the goddess would be delighted, delighted that we appreciate her gifts of beauty to us. And I laughed and I sent the email off to my kid and then I thought, why aren't I calling them goddess stones? So, I came in, I changed all my signs, and I noticed online that other people have been calling them goddess stones, too. They're naturally occurring concretions. And what they are, as far as we know, is colonies of microorganisms that fossilized about 300 million years ago. When the world was covered with microbial slime that was busy making oxygen so we could come live here. So, usually they're rounded on one side, and then the other side has plant imprint from where they formed. And I was buying them at the gem and mineral shows. Sometimes when I first found them I would see them in a booth with many other things and, and people didn't even know really what they had. They would tell me they were from glacier activity but it didn't look like that to me. And then I found the guy whose entire booth was nothing but goddess stones. Just rows and rows, tables and tables. And he could tell how much I loved them because I was crawling under the tables, pulling out the flats and looking at all of them and asking them a million questions. And at one point he said to me, if you want to come to Quebec, I'll take you collecting with me. And so about four years ago, I went. And I got to see where they come out of the ground. I'm not a nature girl, but we climbed down this 25 foot embankment and they were embedded sideways in this sticky clay like mud and I thought to myself if they're at this level in the mud how far back in that embankment do they go how far back in the land the water that was there in the lake would pull them out and so Pierre knew his name was Pierre and he knew exactly where to find the because of the eddies of the water where he could pull them out from underneath ones that had never been touched by human hands before so, goddess stones. I'm passionate about them. I don't know why. I wear this every single day. And when I'm feeling my age, I just think, okay, perspective, 300 million years. Got it. And I use them in my mosaics. I use them in my jewelry. And I'm delighted to share them with you.